today on Rachel Ray. MLB All-Star Nick Swisher bats cleanup for an hour of baseball, food, and fun. It's our Batter Up Show. First, they are looking good. Leading off for the home team, Reach's Cheese Stuffed Barbecue Ranch Meatballs. Wow. That. Of things with Josh Capon's breakfast corn dogs. Yeah! And don't seventh inning stretch without John's baseball inspired cocktail. Da -da 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 -da! Cheers! Today, it's batter up, people. It, of course, is uh, baseball season. Today, we are celebrating big time with some game day food that you can count on. Look, whether you're a baseball fan or not, most people watch the World Series just like they watch uh, Super Bowl. The Super Bowl, exactly. Uh, they want to see the commercials, they want to hang out with family and friends, and they want to celebrate great food that says, I'm a sports fan and I'm going to eat a lot today. <laughs> so I am going to start out today's show with, I. now my husband said, why don't you make some giant meatballs? Do you guys know what a meatball is like in baseball terms? Baseball terms is actually it's a pitch not that, great. Yeah, it's a pitch that's easy to hit. You know, it's a pitch hangs that, over the plate that goes in too slow or right over the plate, and it's like a meatball in that it's very easy to hit, and so pitchers don't want to throw meatballs, but everybody likes to eat meatballs. <laughs> so we are going to make meatballs with bacon laces wrapped around them. And I saw somewhere on uh, a Pinterest or somebody's TikTok or something, a two-sauced meatball. Two sauces. And I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> so we're going to make barbecue and ranch sauce. <laughs> so John is going to be the official mixer of the meatballs. He's going to be the meatball roller. My family, uh, you, you know, we both have Italian uh, backgrounds. <laughs> A lot of Sicilian women have been rolling meatballs in my family for many years. Definitely never with bacon, laces, barbecue sauce, and ranch. But I figure, let's give the man a chance. The Sicilian man To roll chance. some meatballs. So, guys, here's the roadmap of where we're going. Honey, season up the beef part of this over okay. here. Okay. So we're going to start with a, a, to make a giant tray of good a good dozen big almost baseball sized meatballs. Okay, we're going to start out with a pound and a half of ground beef, or you could use a beef substitute. Mm -hmm. Like you, can, there's plant based everything. There's plant based bacon. There's plant based beef substitutes. You, you can use ground turkey if you prefer that. On and on and on. We all know this, right? So pound and a half of beef or whatever protein you choose and about 12 ounces of spicy sausage. We use Oscar's Smokehouse from up by where we live. A little spicy breakfast sausage is Yummy. what I put in this. This mixture, you have to cool before you add it in. Is this good for you, honey? You gotta scrape it out and into okay. it. So this mixture, you have to cool completely before we add it to the bowl. This mixture is an onion, a jalapeno, and a little garlic. And you saute that until it gets soft in the pan. Then to that, I added, see we've got the jalapeno, some garlic, and an onion here just to represent what we did. Then we add in two tablespoons each of cider vinegar, which you should keep in the fridge after you open it and give it a little shake every time you use it. A squirt of yellow or brown mustard. I actually used two squares, about two tablespoons. 
uh, Worcestershire sauce, always, especially with ground beef. A uh, sprinkle, a fat sprinkle of light brown sugar. And a little salt and pepper as we said on the beef portion of this. So this went into here. It's also going to go, hello, into a barbecue sauce glaze. I put a little squirt of ketchup in there too. We're gonna put a big squirt of ketchup over here, about one cup. So we have a ketchup base over very low heat. And then we're gonna put exactly the same stuff that we put in the meatball into the barbecue sauce. So we're adding the Worcestershire, the mustard, the vinegar, the whole shebang, a little black pepper, pinch of salt. You're supposed to throw the pepper over your shoulder? I thought there's salt over your shoulder. One can never be too careful. John. Okay. <laughs> a little brown sugar, you get the gist. Let that cook together. You just need enough to glaze like 12 meatballs. Okay. So now, honey, put this into here. Okay. This smells like that stuff you put on hot dogs. Oh, the coney sauce. Coney. Yes, it's yeah. similar. Cooked onion sauce that we put on hot dogs often. Now you're going to add an egg. And, oh, about a cup or so of breadcrumb. I just sprinkle enough to coat the top. And then get in there, honey. You can do it. Once we get that all mixed together, here's a fun surprise for you. In the middle, we're going to plant another flavor bomb, a piece of pepper jack cheese. Oh, I know. Thank you. Uh, anyway, here's the mixture. A neat tip. Can you show them? Make yeah, it show flat. The scory thing. And the scory Get thing. Get it, baseball score. So good. So we score the meat. You score the meat, and then from each section, you want to make three big meatballs. So he just scored that. So for each quarter of that mix, he's going to use about a third. Do that. Okay. <laughs> to make a meatball. And you're going to start by making a, a patty with about a third of that. And now you need to nest this in there and cover it up with meat, honey. It seems small or something. Oh, look, that works. Okay. Yeah, it is a little, you're very a little cheap. chintzy? Yeah. Okay, I don't know what He's new to the rolling of the balls. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it fun we make well, meatballs? You get to say balls all day? It's very fun. Okay. Here's a ball. Then you make laces. Okay. And put the seam on the bottom of the ball. Bottom of, so like... Put that. And then the other way. And then like this. Uh-huh. And then put the seam down oh, on a parchment-lined baking sheet. I think that's a little off-center, but... Well done, John! <laughs> I'll stop busting your, well... Hump? Baseball meatballs. <laughs> I'll stop busting your baseball meatballs. You can go wash up, honey, because okay. I have a tray rolled. This is what they look like, guys. Okay. Balls are in the oven. Okay, stop. Don't encourage me. So, I'm going to um, find a basting brush here somewhere. We're gonna get the sauce going. John's gonna put all of his rings back on, and we'll be right back. Cameron Diaz talks crushes, celebrating her 50th, and chicken? If you could eat just one dish for the rest of your life. In my fantasy dream world, it would be like a breaded fried chicken. Yes. And use your noodle and your arms to get dinner on the table in a flash. There you go. Nick's great job. So ring a better. Um, we 
are uh, doing a tribute show to baseball, but whether you're a baseball fan or not, I think you're going to like the baseball food we're making in this show. Uh, we started things off, and I mean we, John, um, is a pretty good meatball roller. Honey. I got all dirty and meaty. You got skills. <laughs> um, a meatball in baseball is not great. It means that you threw straight over the plate, and it was too easy to hit, so you didn't do a great job as a pitcher. What I love about baseball is that it's man against man, man against self, and team against team all at the same time. That's what's so poetic about it, you know? Um, but I think everybody can get behind the idea of a bacon-laced wrapped cheese-stuffed meatball with two sauces. So, the barbecue sauce is the same sauce that went into the actual meatball itself. Remember, we cooked jalapeno or serrano pepper, onion, and garlic, cooked that down, and then made a little homemade barbecue sauce for the meatball mixture. And we pretty much just doubled it, but put in more ketchup or tomato base for our brush. Hun, yes. do you want to take the meatballs out of the oven and give them a nice, even, thick glaze and then pop them right back in? Oh, these look good. Yeah, they do. So it's not 100% there, but we've rendered the bacon to shrink it up. We've rendered the bacon to shrink it up. Like this? Mm. Well. More? Uh, Less? Okay. In between? John has clearly never put nail polish on his fingers. <laughs> or his toes. I haven't. Maybe a little... A little more even and a little more patient, honey. Okay. You know, some for the meatballs instead of some for the stove. I think I can handle that. Okay, okay. You go do that and then put, pop her back in the oven, okay? This is harder than it looks. Okay. <laughs> Let's go down here, shall we? I don't want to... I'm such a terrible backseat cook. Like, I'll say, can you help or do this or do that? Yeah, go down there. Leave me alone. And Right. And then I overmanage. I, I backseat drive the food. It's not cool. All right, so let's talk ranch. Just like uh, barbecue sauce, I, I don't think I've ever purchased ranch dressing in my life. And I make mine very different. Um, I don't use mayonnaise and buttermilk. I always use sour cream or thick Greek full-fat yogurt. I like the tang of that. I also like the thickness of the batter. And when I, I make thicker dressings, I use these inexpensive uh, squirt bottles and I just trim the tops of them. I have a ton of them. I use them for a million things. But I keep the dressing in that and you just add a little plastic between the top and the base and you can keep it in the fridge all week and use it for a bunch of different things. So in I've made this recipe for, for years on the show. You'll see it online. We'll pop it up with this whole meal. But basically, I take uh, chive or scallion, minced scallion, parsley, and dill. Fresh dill is the most underused ingredient, in my opinion. Onion and garlic, I just use granulated because it fits through the hole in the squirt bottle a little easier. And your hot sauce of choice. Mix that all together. You can add a splash of vinegar if you want to thin it or a little bit of lemon juice. But this is delicious and thick and fabulous. I'll show you how we serve this up when we come back. meatballs are done. Oh, they look pretty. They are looking yeah. good. Okay, so we're going to take these beautifully crisp they look and saucy. Pitch perfect. Oh. Yeah. Of course, the meatball is not a perfect pitch. It's the opposite of a perfect pitch. I know. I'm mixing but my metaphors But these are going to be but... really tasty. Ooh, look. The cheese is goozing out of that one. Yum. Goozing? Yeah. That's a technical culinary term. Goozing out. Goozing out. It's gooey and oozing at the same time. It's goozing. <laughs> okay. So then I take the platter of these guys. We had a little extra barbecue sauce, but somebody took over cleaned it away. and took it away. Give me the sauce back! Um, hold, 
please. So we put out hoagie rolls on the side. So you, people can split and fill the rolls or they can go sans roll. Thanks, Big Ben. So, um, so if you have a little dab of extra sauce, don't throw it away. Use that at the very end there. And if you spill some on the counter like I just did, slide the platter over and hide it. <laughs> and then we take the second sauce, the ranch. Wow. I know. I know, I know. I should have cut the top off more. I know, it's sticking. But it is good. Come on. Hold, please. Now, you will not defeat me! You show me that bottle who's who. I am going to get this lid off. Please. So up next um, <laughs> is our friend Josh Capon, and we made these beautiful meatballs. Josh is going to make, thank you, Kate the Great. So Josh is going to make, well, bats. He's going to make thunder. It's the toughest top to a bottle I've ever seen. I got oh, it. Thank God. My hero. I chop up Grillo's spicy pickles. I love these. And put the spicy pickles all over the top. Ta-da! Right. Josh Capon is a seven-time winner of Burger Bash, a big burger he is. pickoff. Uh, I, I think that he will approve of the baseball meatballs. And he is going to show you a whole new way to batter up with his core dog. Up next, Josh Capon in the kitchen right after this. All right, back. Uh, my handsome co-host today is my husband, John. He's a big oh. baseball fan. show and we are literally dealing with batter now with a heavy hitter uh, chef Josh Capon is one of our dear dear friends yep. he is a heavy hitter he is definitely a heavy hitter when it comes to burgers he won the burger bash seven times wow. but today he is swinging a mighty bat with his corn dog explain this because it looks crazy we are saving for a very special taster by the way a very one special of the taster. baseball meatballs i love it I did love you it. watch those they, they of course first good. of all i was watching backstage i think you guys said balls 37 <laughs> and a half times this is the greatest show of all time yes. this is never ever close to me it's amazing we keep our bar nice and low oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. no this is out of the ballpark though this is so brilliant explain what this is this is a it's something I've never seen or heard anything like. So you guys called. First of all, when you get the call to go on the Ray Ray show, I get excited because I get to see you and the family, and it's very nice to be back. <laughs> it's what we love, right? We're all back. It's very nice. We batter up, so you want something with batter. We're doing a play on corn dogs, pigs in a blanket, but we're going with breakfast sausage, pancake batter, because breakfast should be fun, right? You know, during the week, during the week, everybody's got to go to school. You're in the rush. Let's just wrap our minds around the fact that you could eat corn dogs for breakfast. Yes, why not? That. Weekends, everybody sleeps in a little bit. Make breakfast fun. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take some breakfast sauces. First, we're going to make a little batter, right? We got a little pancake mix over here. You could buy it just by one of the better ones. A little bit of corn oil, a little bit of cornmeal for texture, a little bit of ginger for a little bit of spice. Oh, I love the ginger. A little bit of cinnamon. Nice. A little bit of sage, oh, and a little bit of mm. fennel, right? That's all the stuff that's normally in mm. breakfast sauces, right? We're going to get rid of this stuff over mm. here. We are going to mix that up. Keep going, Rach, keep okay. going. We got a little milk. We're gonna make this into a nice coarse batter. It'll be nice and thick. Add a lot of flavor. Oh my God, it smells it. amazing. 
I would stick my hand in that, and if I wasn't on television, I'd probably take a bite out of it. Rock. Why not? <laughs> Always taste your product, right? So we got a nice little thick pancake cornmeal batter. Wait, do you guys and see now, where this is going? It's going to get so crazy. We're going to have a lot of fun with this, right? Well, also, get your kids involved. I always say get your kids yes. involved in cooking. And yes. this is the kind of stuff that if you cook with them, they're going to have a good time preparing it and take some ownership of it. And right? exactly. And, you know, if you can get your kids into the kitchen with something in fun and easy like this, guess what? They'll participate when you grocery shop, when you cook vegetables, when you cook dinner. They'll be into the whole program because it, they have some ownership in it. Don't just have them set the table, right? Don't have them set the table and clean right. up after dinner. Get them cooking dinner. Most importantly, when you guys are frying, I think there's a taboo around frying. Properly fried foods are totally fine. Yeah, and most importantly, the oil. You're not absorbing more fat right. than, than cooking in any 100%. other way. Exactly. you got to make sure your oil is at least 350 to 375, or else when you put it That's in right. there, it's just going to absorb the oil. You That's want right. to seal from the outside and then crisp up, which is what we're going to do. So I'm taking some of this batter. I'm smearing it, right? The term is smear. Yeah. Smear. We're smearing this batter all over the top. <laughs> and then Ray Ray, this I is want brilliant. you to roll this. Look at this. We're going to roll it. Look at, you're going to dice that. Right, it's going to blow. Roll. It's potatoes. Oh, my God. It's apples. It's apples. It's apples. Oh, apples. Diced apples. But I would use potatoes. You could use potatoes, but we're going a little breakfast sausage. I would do potatoes and apples. Okay, they're apples and potatoes. <laughs> we're changing the recipe. We're changing the recipe as we I go. I truly thought they were little Why? Well, I thought apples are breakfast Soft. sausage. Yes. No, it's and delicious. Pancakes. Are you kidding me? This is insane. Look how beautiful that is. All right. And so one more. Right, so you made the ball, and he's making the bat. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. The ball and the bat. Exactly. What is on? One what, more. what is on deck for you, my friend, these days? What do you got to what talk about? What is on about? deck? We have the greatest omakase sushi restaurant in all the land called Ito down in Tribeca, which you guys are doing for a visit, by the way. We gotta go. I think we're actually we might. I don't want to jinx it, but we might be up for a Michelin star, which is pretty cool. Uh, Chef Masa and Chef Kevin are doing an incredible job. Uh, we're, we're securing a location for the Fly Fish Club, the world's first NFT restaurant, with my partners Gary. Now Connor, this is the one that I thought Roddy. was so fascinating. Restaurant that's insane, and say the name of the omakase again. Uh, Ito. Ito. Yep. Guys, you got Ito and Ito. <laughs> exactly right. I knew he was going to say that. Part. Exactly. Been with John 20 years. All right, he so we're going in. We're going to go in, right? Funny. Going in, baby. We are going in. We got our oil. Going in. 350, 375. Right there. Throw those. Oh, in. there you go. They, they've been setting. Oh, look at that. See that? Up. The magic of TV, by the way. All right, just lay them in. Good job. Oh, perfect. Oh. See that? Get in there. That's what Ooh. you want. If it doesn't bubble right away. Right away, your oil is saying, I am perfectly good. And most importantly, we want to lay it in, right? When you guys are Gently frying, rest. don't drop things and then run away. You spot yourself. I stain every T-shirt I have. Oh. Just let them gently cook. And then most importantly, just like when you throw a steak on the grill, don't play with it. Just let it cook. Let it cook. Let it do its thing. Let it, let it go sear. Let all that magic happen. There's some in the oven, too. Talk about the toppings. I want to make sure we have time for our special All right, so, oh, that's you know, right. Come on, we sage. Go special we got some tester. crispy sage over here. We do have some in the oven. A little cinnamon sugar. Mm -hmm. Where's the oven? And there's warm syrup here right in front of you. There's nothing in that oven. Oh, there's oven. oven. There's three ovens just There's ovens here. everywhere. Three. Did you find them? Take them out for chef. Okay. Hey, look, we're so, on fire. You have your warm syrup Amazing. back there. Well, warm syrup over there. My darling chef. And we can put a couple in here. You got an extra pair of hands over Isn't there. Isn't it great? This is good. And he makes cocktails. Okay. Not only a world-class so. magician, but extra pair of hands in the kitchen. Look at these. Come on. Here. It's an absolute party. The cinnamon smells so good. It's an absolute party. So where do we watch this? Come on. Come on. Listen, there's Shush. certain things that get me excited. Pigs in a blanket with a little pancake Thank batter. Oh. And some apples. Oh. A little dusting oh. cinnamon oh. sugar. Right? And then hold on. Sage. We're gonna take a little a syrup, right? Because we're gonna put the syrup oh first. Oh my god. And then oh Ray Ray god. is gonna crumble put up some bit sage. Here and put some on, on our taste tester. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Right. The crumble, the crispy sage is gonna stick to that syrup, right? So look, come on! It's wow. a come on! It's a pop! Drop the mic with this food. Okay. 
So we have a very special taste tester, yes, right? Yes, we do. Let me move if the I may, If I may. Yes. One of the greatest to ever play the game. <laughs> yes. Right? With a World Series rings to prove it. But I will go on the record to say one of the greatest off the field. Nobody has the passion, energy, and enthusiasm for life and for baseball as my dear friend, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Nick Swisher! Anytime Nick would come to one of my restaurants, he would literally light up the diner. <laughs> His personality is just like Josh's. It's this big! <laughs> you, guys, you guys are on fire right now. I'm standing back there, I'm sweating, I'm ready to go. You guys are on fire. This, this is good, This right? looks absolutely amazing. I heard the word balls. I heard <laughs> schmear. I heard everything. It was just fantastic. Couldn't wait to get out of here. What right. exactly do we have? That is the bacon, bacon laced, uh, cheese stuffed meatball with ranch I and barbecue sauce. <laughs> and Josh. And then we have a, a, a pigs in a blanket, corn style dog, pancake batter, rolled in apples around breakfast sausages, maple cinnamon, maple syrup and cinnamon sugar. Come on. <laughs> this sounds amazing. This sounds amazing. Um, I'm going to get in on this. Yeah, no, that's one. definitely possible. Okay. Here we go. I'm getting All in right. there, though. Get in there. Oh, God. Okay, here we go, brother. It's very exciting. Take a bite, baby. Take a bite. Come on. It's very exciting. Wow. Mm. Nice. Oh, no. I'm going to like, what? Like the heaven gate. Mm. Wow, that's so good. I'm going to go, get it again. I'm going to get some more again. You know when he goes in for the again. second bite, we're not playing Oh, good, right? that's no when game. When somebody goes in for a second bite, they're not lying. They're like, this really is that good. Hold on, we're all going to try the corn dog at the yeah. same time. Oh. We're all trying the corn dog at the same time. Ray, Ray, you're in on this. All right. I would say leaner. This might be a leaner. Cheers, Only just want to get that chip. Cheers. 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 It's fantastic, Josh. I love you. We have more with Nick Swisher right after we wipe our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with Nick right after this. Nick Swisher. He is so much energy. He is an MLB All-Star, of course, World Series champion uh, with the New York Yankees. My husband geeked out and demanded to co-host today's yes. show. A bit. Long, long time Yankee fan. Okay. We've only been Zoomers. We've never been. I know. We've never, like, right, exactly. been actually in person. Couldn't hang out. Uh, so we're celebrating with our Batter Up show today. We've thrown down some serious food, but now it's time to catch up, Nick. Honey, why don't you start? Yes, I'm curious what you think since baseball is in full swing, sure. almost full swing. Get it? Ah, very um, subtle. And we're, we're getting to the end of the season. What are your predictions for the uh, playoffs, World Series? Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, you know baseball is doing well when, you know, both New York teams are sitting atop yes. the division. Yes. Yes. A lot of good stuff going on. I think I'm just like everybody else in the world. I would love to see, at the end of the day, I'd love to see an East Coast, West Coast matchup, right? right. Yeah. A Los Angeles Dodgers, New York Yankee World and, Series. Yep. Sounds pretty good to me. That's, that's exactly what <laughs> yes. There's a lot of records that might be broken. Well, you know, they're already getting broken right now, you know, back here, back East. Um, so, speaking of players, who made you want to play, and who did you try and model your sure. your career after? I, I, I think my dad would kick my butt if I didn't say him. My dad played in the big leagues for nice. 10 years, right? Of course. Uh, so I mean, you got to go ahead Somebody outside my father, my two favorite players growing up were Roberto Clemente. Yeah. Only, 
Yeah. And people, uh, they always say, you know, you, you're, you're not old enough. You were never able to see him play. Uh, but I wrote, I wrote book reports and I wrote articles. Oh. And the fact that somebody would lose his life helping others yeah. Yeah. really hit me in a spot where yeah. something I'll always remember. So to be able to have that sort of um, role model, someone that I never got to meet but always wanted to live up to. And so now I guess I'm just trying to live my best life and be the best human being I can be nowadays. You know? And I think baseball, if, if you become a fan of baseball, it's, I was saying this earlier in the show, it is so poetic, it is so moving to watch, whether it's your team or just some of these greatest moments in baseball history. It's so moving to me that it's man against self and man against man and team against mm -hmm. team all at the same time. And I remember many, many years ago doing um, on the local news a little thing called Home and Away. It became $40 a day and all the travel shows I did for Food Network in the years later. But I went to all of the ballparks I could get to for $100 or less. And I asked all these great players their first memories of baseball. What is your first memory of baseball? So my first memory of baseball was probably when I was six years old. Uh -huh. And my father played in the big leagues for 10 years, but also coached in the minor leagues for another oh. 13 years. So my first, re my first recollection of the game was playing tape ball. Now, this is kind of gross, but this is how I did it back in the day. My dad was coaching for the Waterloo Indians, the Waterloo, Iowa Indians. It was uh -huh. A ball for the Cleveland Indians at that time. And back then, you know, we didn't have, there wasn't a whole lot of baseball. So what guys would do after the game was over, they would rip the tape off their ankles and they would just throw it on the ground. Well, that was a perfect time for me to get up all the oh. tape I could, <laughs> create a baseball myself, and oh. that's how I would, that's how I would oh. get in the locker room. I love so, that. You know, like, you know, it's tape ball. Yeah, tape ball, like, <laughs> saving up all the aluminum cans after the game and that's how I bought my first mitt. So there's just so many little things that come into play and now that I've got my own family and my own girls. Yeah, I mean, how is your Oh baby? my gosh, dude, do I'm like... Girls, dude, do the girls grow well? They do, are they, they do, they are. They are very athletic and I... I pray to God they continue to keep looking like their mother. They are doing such oh. a good job so far. Uh, but I am a girl dad through and through. Oh, I, mean, I, I've love got, it. I got the braids down. I've got the oh. lunch. I mean, you, you name it, I've got it all. You I, got the braids I, and the lunch down. <laughs> I am so blessed to be able to have the two greatest daughters that anybody could ever ask oh. for. The greatest wife, the most beautiful wife, the most supportive wife, the, the most talented wife. You're excited about planet. what's coming up for you, too. This, I want to go to Mexico City to see him. Yes. Tell everybody about this sure. uh, world tour sure. home run, home run derby. derby. Yes, it's actually called a Home Run Derby X, uh, and it's an initiative put on by Major League Baseball to help grow the game globally, right? Uh, to be able to have the opportunity to go to a place like London and to bring a Home Run Derby right to the doorstep of people who've never really seen the game. I think if you really want to gain notoriety, you have to start with the younger generation. Right. You have to get them excited. You gotta get the so, kids excited. So these Home Run Derbies, are they're a little shorter, they're a little more exciting. You can put fielders in play so they can, nice. catch, they can catch balls, right? And be able to gain points for their team. <laughs> Uh, we're getting the opportunity to go to uh, Seoul, Korea, as well as Mexico wow. City. Wow. So for myself, just the fact that I'm able to be part of the game and I'm playing the game that I love and I'm doing my best can to try and Can we link all of that game. info up through, yep. through our show? So people yeah, of can, course, 100%. Because we want to get there. You got it, dude, no doubt. Are the girls no doubt. No, they're, not, they're in school. They're in school. <laughs> you can just take them to one. Yeah. You gotta get them to at least I know, one. I gotta get them to one. It's, I'm, I'm hoping that Mexico City. It's part of an international City. educational that's experience. Right, that's right. That's what I'm gonna let them know. That they can write Everybody a quarterback. You heard it. International. That's <laughs> right. International. <laughs> so Nick, where can we watch your thoughts on the game? Yes, so, you know, I'm doing some stuff now. I've got a show every Thursday for uh, CBS Sports. It's called Swish and the Wiz. Uh, we do that from 11 to 11.30 every Thursday, which is great. <laughs> also doing some games for Peacock on the weekends. You know me, I bring some serious you juice early. You have fun You have fun I breathing. I am one of the luckiest human beings <laughs> on the planet. So I totally... You are electric. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Um, I hate to say goodbye to him, but this no. I guess the sooner he leaves, the sooner he can come back. Right? <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. We love you. We love you. You guys so are much. amazing. Up next, uh, well, John's on deck. Uh, John, he's here and he says he's got a home run cocktail perfect for your next game. <laughs> Is so much fun. It's almost as good at 
being in an epic baseball game. It's our batter up show. Uh, it is Friday. So um, John is going to whip up a cocktail that he created. Um, I, did. I don't know, as a baseball? It's a baseball themed cocktail. Okay, what's the name? I'm calling it the Triple B, because it has <laughs> bourbon, it has beer, and it's for baseball. <laughs> um, I literally just made that up like during the commercial. Like, okay, it it's, also, it's also a little bit ironic because our dog's nickname is Triple B. Yeah. Bella Boo Blue, we call her Triple B for short. We will not be giving this to our no, dog. No, dogs do not drink beer or Dogs bourbon. will Bad not idea. be drinking this. No dogs will be hurt in the making of this cocktail. Take it away, John. Okay, so basically, it's a sort of a whiskey sour topped with beer, basically. Um, and a whiskey sour is whiskey, in this case we're using bourbon, and something sour, which we have fresh squeezed, always fresh squeezed lemon juice, and something sweet. Uh, simple syrup, which I've said it a million Equal times. Equal parts water Equal and parts, sugar. Equal parts water and sugar. Just melt the sugar. It's, it's, it just incorporates a lot. So that's pretty much easily. a whiskey sour right That's there. a whiskey sour right there. Right. Now, just to make it interesting, I'm going to spice it up a little bit with some hot sauce. A little Tabasco. A little Tabasco in there. You can add as much or as little as you want. This is going to put hair on my chest, but in my family, that's not a joke. It happens oh, from time to time. <laughs> and now, we just... And this is just the topper, right? That's the topper, yeah. Okay. So this is our whiskey, sa our spicy whiskey sour base. Shake it up to chill. I know you love when I do this. I know. It makes... Never mind. He looks very cute when he's shaking. He wags his butt when he shakes the drink. <laughs> yeah, you gotta wag and shake at the same time. It's very cute. Anyway, I have some nice pint glasses here filled with ice. Put that in the butt. That would be good just by itself. But we're going to gild the lily and add a can of beer on top. Because, you know, you can't have baseball without beer, right? You, you have a new appreciation for beer, actually, don't you? I do, because of all the service I did in Poland and Ukraine. And that's, you know, when in Poland and Ukraine. And we're going to garnish it. like some beers. Garnish it with a little spicy chili. And then I know you like straws, so I got some straws out here for you. Okay. Let's see if I'm gonna. Wait, wait, wait. What? Da -da 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 -da! Cheers! Woo! That's good. That is absolutely. You you like it? Delicious. I actually like really. She likes a brown it's liquor. Like that's Mikey. never happened before. It's like Mikey with the cereal. Okay. We have a very special story coming up next, honey, right? We're going to end the show with a must-see. So whatever you have to do, do it very quickly and come back, because this is a story almost 100 years in the making. Right after this. We're in the ninth inning of our batter up show. We could not let you guys leave without sharing this very special story. What an inspiring ball player this person is. She is living proof that it's never too late to be your most authentic self. 95 years in the making, this story. You've got to check out our new friend, yes. Maybelle Blair. My name is Maybelle Blair. I'm 95 years old, and I played for the Peoria Red Wings in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. I was out playing softball. A scout came out and watched me and says, Hey, Maybell, I'm going to sign you up to play professional baseball. And I says, Well, I don't think so, uh, but you can follow me home. So he did. And he went over and over and went back and forth between he and my mother. And finally he said, Mrs. Blair, you don't get it. We're going to pay her $55 a week. My mother looked at my father and said, go George, go crank up the car. I'm packing her suitcase and she's out here on the Santa Fe on the next train out. Oh my goodness, the most favorite thing was when I went to the locker room 
and I saw my uniform hanging up. I put that little dress on, and I thought I was the cutest girl in the United States at that very moment, or the most proudest, let's put it that way. I saw the field, and I said, Mabel, you finally made it. You are a professional baseball player. My happiest day. They were thinking about making a television series, a continuation of a league of their own, the original one. I got a call. They said, would I mind coming down to Hollywood? So I said, of course not. I'd love to. So off I went. It made me so welcome. I felt like I was one of them before no more than 10 minutes. And I enjoyed that so much that day. They had a screening of the first episode, and they had a question and answer session. I don't know what happened to me. I said to and the whole audience, can you imagine? I'm gay. I came out at 95 years old, and I was so thrilled. And then I got to worry about my family. Oh, my God, they're going to disown me. Well, wrong. The next day, the phone rang. They was all calling me up and telling me, how much they love me, and that did it. So now I'm out in the open. I can tell everybody and help other people realize that you don't have to hide in the closet anymore, that people now understand and can realize it's who you are, and that's what counts. Players, for ball players, for baseball itself, and for our country. Thank you for being such an inspiration to so many of us. And thank you for letting us take you guys out to the ball game today. Uh, thank you, of course, to Josh Capon. Um, those those crazy oh, corn those dog things are amazing. We hope you like our baseballs, mm -hmm. our baseballs too, our bacon wrapped uh, baseballs. I hope you guys try those out. And Nick Swisher, wow, well, another inspiring human being. Awesome. Right up there, right up there with Mabel.